Welcome to the Tactical Sub. In this video, we review my AFLW team in round six and discuss my trades ahead of the final AFLW double game week. Before I get into it, can I just thank everyone for the huge support on my last video. I never expected that, so it really made my week. Well, that was the positive. Now it's time for the negative. My team. I ruined all the good work I did last week by scoring a measly 1,500 points to put me well outside the top 1,000 ranks. I'll go over the key players before jumping into the trades. My backline was actually quite strong, with special mentions to Charlotte Thomas with 85 and Isla Sheeran with the 91. She's been a great trade-in since I got her in last week. What let me down was Steen, who proved that she was too big of a risk. She scored 23 in her first game and 53 in her second, to have a total almost 20 points less than her one game last week. Moving on to the mids, it was a disaster. Rowbottom was good in the first game, but then had yet another poor score, not even managing the 80. She was still the joint top scorer for the week, along with Gardner. Riddell and Garner both scored under the 100 mark for North. But the big disappointment was Georgie Prespakis, who couldn't even score 120 from two games. She was on 57 at halftime in her first game, but then in the remaining six quarters in her week, she scored 59. I knew it was a risk, but definitely didn't expect it to be that disastrous. Holly Cooper was a decent rookie too. On the bench, my trade in Bradfield also didn't live up to expectations. O'Dowd was good in the rucks, as this was my first week fielding her. Like the midfield, my forward line was also terrible. Hodder was okay, but the other four let me down so much and lost plenty of value while doing so. So yeah, that terrible week earned me a 7,000 round rank, which sucks so much after the good work in the last few weeks. Now, looking at trades, the big one for me is of course, Marinoff. Where do I even begin here? 172. She's averaging 150. And I don't have her, even though I labeled her as the number one must have player. The worst thing is that I was expecting her to be somewhat affordable with a high break even, but instead she's over 1.8 million. Seriously crazy. Anyway, I've banked 350,000 just for this, so hopefully there's something I can do. Preferably, I would trade Prospakis up to her, but since she didn't make the money that I expected her to, I could destroy my entire team and still not be able to afford Marinoff. I also don't think I can go without Marinoff because we could get like 600 points just from her and no one else even averages 100 on this double game week. So the only real option I'm afraid is trading out one of my premium mids and I think it has to be Rowbottom. Charlie Rowbottom has averaged 96 in her last four and has three bad matchups to come, including Brisbane this week. To fund this move, I have two options. One is to trade Fiedler down to Vukic who scored decently this week. Then I would have one trade left to straight swap someone. The other option only works if Pauger is named and if we can ignore the four she scored. With this option, I would trade Brennan down to any rookie priced under 340,000 and then move O'Luckland up to a Kate Hall. I think this is probably the only option to keep me close to the top thousand because I'm falling away quickly. Anyway, my captain will finally be Marinoff I'll field Bradfield in the mids and hopefully Pauger in the forward line. Let me know where you are ranked down in the comments. Thanks for watching 